We've got a mass of energy projects going on here, ranging from the real technical side of energy and the, the data that we can get from energy monitoring devices through to experimental studies of influencing the way that people might engage with an energy device of some kind, uh, right through to then focus groups with people discussing energy use in their day-to-day -day lives. My name is Murray Goulden, uh, I'm a sociologist by trade uh, and my interest at Horizon is in this uh, idea of the smart grid and how they work uh, with users in the sort of home environments people at home interacting with other adults, other kids in the house, and how that plays out in the technologies that they use. If you're interested in demand-side management, or, or DSM, the energy suppliers needing to know more information about how energy is being used so they can more efficiently manage production of energy as well. The supplier, for example, can send uh, a signal to the user saying, uh, we've got spare energy right now, it's cheap, so if you want to switch on your washing machine, now would be a good time. It's about uh, managing the use of electricity as well as the production of it. So what we're interested in is what implications that might have for the home user. How to ensure that the, uh, the technologies that are planned to be deployed are accepted by the public. Beyond that, how they work with the public in, uh, in efficient ways um, and that don't lead to rejection or getting left on a shelf somewhere and ignored. So what we did is create a series of videos. Neil, Mike and Vicky are 320-somethings sharing a flat. We created three narratives essentially. In each of them we had uh, a series of technologies and a different kind of uh, home setup. So we had a young professional in one, a family in another. We had a, what we called a dark version uh, where the technology and the users kind of conflicted in every way possible basically. And the light version where it all worked perfectly. Uh, and what one of our flatmates was a nurse or something and she had night shifts. So she'd come home in the middle of the night and the lights would come on and wake everybody else up. And, uh, she could do little to stop that. And that was the negative scenario. You know, in the positive scenario, the same encounter, but things went a lot better. It stopped her from forgetting to turn them off again. And it, it, it all just worked a bit more smoothly. Both were kind of extreme versions deliberately, so we kind of opened up a kind of more realistic space, if you like, in the middle, uh, that we hope people would like to talk about more. And this kind of te technique has been demonstrated to elicit a broader range of opinion uh, on a topic. One of the things that we found during the focus groups was that, on the one hand, whilst people want more information, they want to understand uh, energy use better, uh, they also like the fact that they don't have to think about using energy. So there's obviously a contradiction here between to what degree they have to get engaged, to what degree they have to think about these things. But it's going to require at least uh, a fairly fundamental cultural shift, which uh, we perhaps can't assume will happen easily. We've got some really neat research around uh, shared energy displays and whether different types of display are, are going to influence uh, dynamics. I'm Caroline Legg. I'm a research fellow in social psychology. I look at situations where people have to share uh, energy in a shared house or in the workplace. There are going to be loads of uh, energy displays in the future. People are discussing um, how much detail that should contain and maybe the one that is the most efficient in terms of energy might be one that is going to uh, increase antisocial behavior for example are they going to do it fairly or not inherently everybody assumes it's good to have energy monitor but we think that maybe not always and under some circumstances it can be not as good Imagine that you're sharing a house with other people and all of a sudden the, the energy bill is much higher than you expected. If you find out that the other people are using more energy than you, what's your natural reaction to that? How does that affect the dynamics in the group? And importantly, what's their subsequent behavioural reaction? We show them a specific type of energy display, either one where they only see the average use of the house, uh, or another display where they see individual use, so how much each person used, but uh, it's anonymous, each person is represented by a letter, or another type of display where they know who is using what with the names, so they have a proof of who is using too much. If you see other people saving energy, will that encourage you to save energy? And if you see other people wasting energy, 
What influence is that going to have? What kind of level of information is useful here? In social psychology and behavioural economics, there uh, has been a number of uh, different research uh, paradigms that uh, studied people's interactions, especially in terms of cooperation around different kinds of resources. And the interesting thing here that we're taking choices which are not just independent, not just for ourselves, but they uh, have consequences for others. And that's why we can use all these uh, studies in behavioural economics and social psychology to apply to such questions as energy use at homes. Not everybody will cooperate and sometimes, especially if people in, encounter unfair behaviour, they might become angry and perhaps retaliate. And in this case, it might mean many things, as well as increasing energy use, for instance. In order to, to meet our carbon reduction targets, people are going to have to change the way we use energy. And we also need to intelligently design technologies that facilitate people's behaviour change.